Reactions are still trailing the National Assembly's decision to reamend the Electoral Act Amendment Bill by approving both the direct and indirect primaries as the modes for electing candidates by political parties. Both chambers made the reamendment to separate uh, plenary sessions plenary sessions. In the Senate, the lawmakers also added the consensus clause for the nomination of candidates by political parties for elective positions. The upper chamber equally noted that a political party that adopts the direct primaries procedure shall ensure that all aspirants are given equal opportunity of being voted for by members of the party." End quote. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission says it will not release the 2023 general election timetable until the electoral bill is signed into law. Well, joining me to discuss this is uh, lawyer Ulutuboson Oshifuora. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. for joining us on TVC Breakfast. It's a pleasure to be here. Lam, let's get a sense of uh, what you make of uh, recent developments with uh, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, especially after the National Assembly returned from recess. We knew what transpired before they went on, and now they have returned and uh, have uh, seemed to toe the line of the president. Let's get your reaction to uh, that. Well, I think, um, you know, is there, is there space, and um, there's a whole lot of panic mm. and panicking, you know, amongst them. Um, but you see the arguments that are plausible and against the mm. old amendment. You find out that um, one of the arguments they put forward, or before even the arguments, you find out that after every election, you know, they review yes. what has gone down. Then they look at it, okay, what's the best way to go about this thing? Now, some people have come up with the argument that direct primary is, is expensive. Mm. If, you, if every political party should conduct direct primaries, Think about the smaller political parties. They are as relevant as the big ones. Mm. Now, do they have the resources to go around the nation and conduct, you know, like that? That's one argument. Then, but some will tell you that direct primary simply means like lining up behind your candidate. Mm. And now, the, the the cons of direct primaries is very simple. One, it is expensive. But forget the expensive part of it. The major parties, you know, it's, it's like going back to the op option A4. Right, yes. So, now, let's say a governor has a candidate in the state and he lines up behind his candidate. Are you telling me that in the name of democracy, you will look at your governor in the eye and go and line up? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just very simple. So, so that's why some people feel that. So, but you see, the argument which the president put forward is that give people options. Mm. If, if, if direct primary suits you, then do it. If, if um, indirect, indirect suits you, then, I mean, get delegates. That's simpler and that's tidier. Mind you, the, 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 the people in the National Assembly are our own representatives, and they make laws on our behalf, and, and, and we accept whatever they do. So it's... Whatever. Whatever. Right. <laughs> no, so, but, but you see, the argument of consensus candidate right. is where some people actually have yes, issues. Yes, because <clears throat> there are those who say that it is just the Senate that injected that, but uh, the House of Reps did not, and so that could pose a challenge to the passing of, of uh, this bill. Well, with the way they've gone about it, I think at the end of the day, the House of Reps, well, they, they're pushing the, the, the argument that it's about options. And democracy is about options. Whatever suits you, then just take it. If you feel consensus, because if you look at it, I'm looking at the smaller parties. If we're a party of, say, a thousand people, we already know what we want to do. This is the person we want. We gather together and say, this is the person we want. But there are for. those who, uh, who would say that uh, perhaps they did that under pressure, so to speak, and so might want to throw up cases, litigations here and there, which others are also, you know, this is one of the concerns as well, litigations afterwards. That's why there's another option. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I actually buy that angle of options. If you feel aggrieved, democracy, it's about popular participation. There will always be people who will be aggrieved. There will always, I mean, if you look at the Holy Book, Jesus had 12 disciples. He had people who dissented despite mm -hmm. his, you know, omniscience and all that. Now, so there will always be dissenting voices. But the fact is, you look at it, is it popular? Is it what the majority wants? Then we might have to go with it.
Mm. Fine, you, you, it's not like you're going to ignore the minority, but you can't, you will always, it's about what's popular, and that's what we vote for. So, at this level, what, what, what is sound? And what I feel, I, I mean, it's a plus on the part of the president. You know, he said, give people options. Let them pick whatever they want. Don't stifle them. Don't narrow them to only direct primaries. We saw the fallout of direct primaries in the last election and how it affected some people yeah. in some places. And we saw all the hues and cries and the complaints and everything. So he said, these, these, these are options for parties. If you feel in this state, this is what we want to do, and everybody feels that's the popular way to go about it, there will always be argument for and, and against. against. If you say, for me, the issue of consensus, if you look at the big parties and somebody just, it's, it's like, you know what they've been fighting against in position. Consensus means there's no, it's not like everybody we will come agreed. together. Somebody will, the leader will pick, this is the man I want. Mm. And you don't, you just have to koto. There's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you can do. Or if you're a grave, you go to another party. And if they keep doing the same thing, how many parties will you keep jumping but, to? But that, that's the issue now where <clears throat> a lot of persons are also saying that we can't continue having these issues of jumping to other parties and uh, having litigations here and there. It is stalling our democracy, the growth of our democracy, so to speak. It, it, it's, it's a question of ideology. If I'm in this party and I feel that I, I bought into what they're doing, then I can stay there. If I feel I grieved, there's always option. You can always find the party that suits your ideals and, and, and your outlook to life and politics. Now, so, but on the issue of litigation, I think one of the amendments, I think that must have been the 2006 um, amendment where they had to come up with a time frame. Mm. for litigation if you find that i mean if you look at anambra akt and um, i think one or one other state like that um ondo you know when the whole litigation thing ran you know too long and you find out that some states stay within the four years some had serious litigation so they had to come up with certain amendments that say whatever you do at the high court level shouldn't or the go, tribe, beyond, shouldn't the go beyond 90 days mm. then the appeal shouldn't go beyond and, and i think that's plausible that has stabilized because if if that wasn't put in place i tell you that we'll be conducting <laughs> elections at different states almost every six six months because so that was able to like um, um mitigate that that problem and and we're good for it so Amendments will always come. There will always be need to review what we have done and look at how far we've gone. And then this will fly. After this, we'll look at how it works with 2023 elections. You are certain this will fly? It would fly. It would fly. It's options. I mean, you can't argue against options. Right. The, the fact is, if you say, okay, you don't want the plenty options, then what you have is, let's go back to direct primaries. The powers that be, not necessarily the powers that be, people have been crying that mm. this thing works ill. And you see, direct primaries, I'll give it to you straight. It, it's a money bag politics. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, so the highest, I mean, the person with the biggest boss will dictate how things go. Mm, interesting. Let, let, uh, joining us from Abuja is uh, Chairman Partners for Electoral Reform, Ezenwa Mwagu. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, INEC is saying that uh, if this uh, uh, amendment, the Electoral Act amendment, is not passed into law, it would not be releasing its timetable for the 2023 elections. And I wonder what you make of, of this. That it will not be missing the... It will not be releasing its timetable for the 2023 elections. Well, I, I, I think that I still want to stay on the, that it, can, it should be passed. Um, I don't see why it should not. Um, but like I keep saying, what is the intent of amendments? You, you work in to improve a situation. If, if that then is the, the overarching uh, reason for which you are doing these amendments, um, it then means that uh, you must be able to push those things that expand the democratic space and then are not constricted. So um, we're working to ensure that it is passed. And I think that Nigerians um, from all over 
uh, will have to lend their voice to ensure that these improvements, uh, because the the what is in that bill is not just the direct indirect consensus option debate that we're having. There are final sunshine issues that 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 bill has that will improve the integrity of our election, and I think that we should just uh, do all that we can to make sure that it is passed. Absolutely. But the question I was asking is to get your reaction to INEC's decision saying that um, except the uh, electoral amendment uh, bill is passed, it will not release its timetable of activities for oh, okay. the 2020 I, okay, I understand. Yes. Okay, I understand. I understand you now. I think that the uncertainty that not passing the bill places our neck in a in a very difficult situation. But I also argue that if you if you live in a two bedroom flat and it's uncomfortable for you, you are facing a lot of difficulties and you are working to get somewhere bigger. Uh, if you don't get it, you won't pack out from where you are. You are not going to live where you are. You still stay where you are, even though you desire something much more bigger. I think that. Um, 395 days ab about that to 2023 elections. INEC is in a difficult situation in terms of whether it should. Um, but uh, what I think is that it has to give us something tentative, um, especially after January uh, or February, beginning of February, if this law is not passed. Right. Let's come back to the studio now. When you look closely at uh, the amendments we have made since 1999 up until now, uh, is really, uh, are the amendments really the challenge or the, the fact that, you know, executing some of the things written in, in those laws are the issues that, you know, seem to be bedeviling either political parties or our processes. How has that even moved us closer to getting better with our democracy and uh, uh, elections? Well, um, sincerely speaking, you know, earlier we alluded to the fact that um, the one for the time for litigation, right? that is one of the amendments that was made. Then we also saw the issue of card reader. Yes. You know, way back, when, about the time when the card reader came, there were decisions of court that didn't really support card reader mm. but you know by the next election we saw how well card reader had worked and then the courts even up to the supreme court had to you know lend credence to card reader being a part of our electoral system it is not we're not there but we're not far from where we're going the amendments have really helped one of the things the amendments have done is stabilize the polity then, you know, like we said, amendments are basically a review and preview, a review of what has gone down and a preview of what's coming. Mm. Now, so like, like it is now, the amendments coming in, the amendments coming in has been able to like, okay, show us that this is the direction to go. The amendments are based on complaints and things, grievances that we've seen in the past. Mm. So, and so far, so good. I was called... I was called those in charge, maybe a C, C plus. Really? C plus, yes. For <laughs> stabilizing the polity and moving us, you know, at least in the right direction. I mean, we're not where we used to be. Mm. We're not where we want to be, but we're far from where we used to be. And that's what the amendments have done. Scoring us a C. Let me take this question now uh, to... Uh, uh, is in Wangu, perhaps he has uh, a different perspective, talking about how amendments uh, over the years since we, uh, democracy in, uh, began in 1999 has moved us closer to where we want to be, improved our polity, ensured we have a transparent process, uh, as, as well as uh, ensuring that uh, people, we have this democracy where that carries everyone along in the process as well. Inarguably, we've made, uh, like my colleague in the studio there said, we've made incremental progress. Um, we're working to get better. Um, we, we absolutely are not where we were before. Um, you, you did uh, can remember that there was a time you could just be voting, and the result of where you're voting will be announced. And, and that's where we were. We were coming from a place where 
ballot box stuffing, pouring in, scatting away the ballot box, and then bribing um, electoral management officials uh, to share ballot papers to politicians. That's where we are. We, we move from that to, to where we had multiple voting identity, voter identity theft, and the rest of them. If we are shifting from that, we've taken elections away from the from the electoral management body and returned it to the people. And so politicians are walking around voter inducement, vote buying, and all of those things because votes the, the, the power has gone back to the people, and that's not where we were before. So the whole idea of technologizing elections is to also now reduce the influence. Um, what we have seen in terms of vote, uh, voter inducement and the rest of them, and get to a point where we show up uh, the confidence of the voter that at the end of the day their votes count. Uh, if you saw what happened in the do and Ondo, there is a relative uh, uh, confidence building process in, in those two elections. A lot of people believe that the votes they cast actually counted. So we we have shifted C plus. Uh, is is, <laughs> in the, um, is in, it's okay, but I, I will go for a B B plus uh, right. if you ask me because uh, being practically on ground in most of these uh, elections and the electoral process over a period of time, I've I've seen incremental progress and I, it's something we need to cheer about and hoping that if we continue to work at it the way we're doing, we'll get to that point where. Um, we, we can be looking to something much, much better. How about voter participation? Some persons will tell you that uh, there seem to have been a, a decline, voter apathy in, in recent times. Uh, and that is what this is supposed to encourage at the end of the day. What do you make of that? There are two levels. An election is a process. It's not just, it's not just uh, voting. Um, so if you take the whole gamut, if we, if we have taken the voter register to about 80 million plus, that, that's huge. That's, that's participation. Um, so the actual voting uh, is, 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 a, is, is, is something much more that you can, you can look at. So if you talk about voting during election, there, there is not much excitement because quite a lot of people have their issues. Um, but my sense always is that if people understand the, the power of that PVC that they have, they would, you don't need any voter education to ask them to get into voting properly on, on election day. So participation is increasing in, in terms of how involved people are in political party activities. That's why they, there is this whole debate about uh, direct indirect consensus and the rest of them. All of it is participation. The, the voter registration process is all participation. We need to walk to that point where those in government now have to make, you know, government and governance very, very people-centric in a way that people find value for going out to go and vote. That, that, that's a huge challenge. And it's not just in Nigeria. Uh, in most parts of the world, people are beginning to question whether government works for them or not. And that is also affecting whether they will be voted or not. But the, the work will be on those who eventually are elected to do much more, to excite people enough to, to say the government works for us, then we need to be able to. But even upsetting yourself is a vote. You are voting by not voting, actually. Right. Interesting perspective there. You're voting by not voting. But let's bring the conversation to the studio now. Uh, perhaps you want to react to what he just said with regards to voting uh, when you do not vote or you are voting when you are not voting. Uh, talking about voter participation on days of election, how we can, how those in the politic and, you know, and the confidence make this attractive for people to participate on days of elections. All right. Um, first of all, I'll say I like to be a student of Mr. Wangu for giving <laughs> B plus. I, I, I love I love lecturers who score people well like that. Now, but you see, coming to voter participation, sincerely, if you look at it, there's been a decline. Yes. There's been a massive decline. If you look at um, the Anambra election, the amount of uh, the number of people who participated, less than four hundred thousand. And if you look at the population, you see that it's a far cry from what used to obtain in the past. So I think there's this general apathy on the part of the people that um, they, they still don't feel connected. 
the players in the political field are well gingered and are active in what they are doing. Mm. But those who are supposed to do the voting, the populists, they still feel this detachment. They don't feel that connection with government and that's why you find that decline. But you see, with 2023 coming on, I think there's a bit of awareness and people know that, okay, we want a departure from where we've been, but people still don't understand, like Mr. Umagu said, that um, people don't understand the power of the PVC. Mm. Because if for 400 people voted the governor in, in a state where you have like 2.5 million people, all you need is just get another set of 500,000 people and they will obtain that result. Right. So if you could mobilize that amount of people, then you will get a different result from what has been on ground. All right. Um, Mr. Wango, quickly, your final word. If this amendment is done, what would it change? Quickly, in 15 seconds. Well, what will change is that people will not uh, go on the way they have done, especially electoral officials who um, they relict on their duties and functions and without consequences. All right. uh, there will be review if an electoral official makes a call under duress, uh, that call can be reviewed and then the, the real things that the people voted for can be actualized. All right, so I'll I'm, I'm looking forward to this moment, yeah. All right. That will be a fine place to leave this conversation. Thank you so much. Chairman Partners for Electoral Reform is in Wagu. Uh, we must also thank you, lawyer Olutubosu Oshufuora, for your time on the program. Always a pleasure.